Hey guys, Dr. Hey guys, Dr. Betts here with another fantastic chemistry video. And today we're going to talk about structural formulas. Uh, there's a few ways to draw organic formulas. Some are a little more time consuming, a little more detailed. Some are a lot less detailed, but a whole lot faster to draw. Now you're going to notice something about organic chemistry. Carbon and hydrogen are ubiquitous. They're just everywhere, guys. So we don't always have to show all the details to get, a point, to get our point across. So we're going to learn how to do that today. First thing we're going to learn about are condensed structural formulas. Very important that we can use these things. They're not hard to use. They're actually very simple. What you do is you take a molecule like, say, this one. And we recognize that between every carbon, we can kind of, in our minds, draw an imaginary dotted line. And we can kind of explain on the left and the right of that line what's going on. Now, if I just look at this right here, and I told you to, or I asked you to give me the molecular formula of what's right here, everybody in the room would say CH3. Everybody would say that. And if I asked you to tell me what was on this side of the dotted line, everybody would say CH3. So there you go. There's a condensed formula. This is called an expanded structural formula, or also called a Lewis formula. This is a condensed structural formula. Notice how it leaves out some detail. It leaves out the carbon-carbon bond. It leaves out the carbon-hydrogen bonds. It leaves out some detail. But we don't need all that detail, because we know that this carbon is bonded to that one. This carbon has three hydrogens surrounding it. This carbon has three hydrogens surrounding it. That's the only way to draw it without violating the octet rule. Okay. That's what it's showing us. All right. Now, how about this one? How do we draw the condensed structural formula of this bad boy? Well, very simple. Again, draw the dotted lines between the carbon-carbon bonds. And if I asked you to tell me the molecular formula about what was here, you all would say, say it out loud, CH3. Here, you all would say CH2. Now, we've got to be careful here. Let's just, whoops. We've got to be careful here. Let's ignore the bromine for now, but we're going to come back to it. And let's just do the carbon hydrogen. And so we would say CH. And then we would say for this one, CH3. So notice, we left out the bromine for now. What you do is you simply draw it in. Okay? Just draw it in. So this represents this. Now, I think everyone in the room will agree that this structure is a whole lot more complicated to look at than this one. This one's much simpler, although still complicated, still busy. Still, I shouldn't say complicated. I should say busy. One second, guys. Let me uh, fix my slide here real quick. Uh, I guess we'll just fix it another way here. Let me just uh, give me, bear with me one second, guys. There we go. So how are we going to do this one at the bottom? How are we going to do this one here at the bottom? Oh, I guess my top one got erased, didn't it? Sorry about that. Let me put it back up here for you in case you didn't get it written down. There you go. So there's the top one. Now the bottom one, uh, you, I would do it like this. So again, dotted line between the carbons. There you go. Now I would do this one like this. I would go CH2. And then if you want to put the OH on the bottom, you can. Could have been on top, it's fine. CH2, carbonyl, CH3. So I would do it. Uh, you could also do it this way. OH, CH2, CH2. Let me go back there real quick. Fix that up. Oh, let's make the whole thing bigger. It's kind of small. There we go. OH. CH2, CH2, CO, CH3. That's another way you could have drawn it. Now, this here tells me there's a carbonyl or a C double bond O. This means that this OH is attached to the CH2. That's another way you could have been drawn as well. Uh, there's a few ways you can draw these things. So now here's some examples. Here is ethane. So CH3, CH3, we just did that one. 
Here's one that has CH3, CH, CH3, CH3. So this is a little more complicated, but look how elegant the abbreviation is. CH3, close open uh, inside of parentheses to the three. So let me draw that just a little bigger for you guys. I think it might be a little small. So notice we have one, two, three CH3 groups. These are called methyl groups, by the way. We'll get to that later. We have three CH3 groups attached to a central carbon. So we put open parentheses, CH3, close parentheses, three. So there's three of these CH3 groups attached to this carbon, and that carbon also has a hydrogen. Okay, I get it. It's a little complicated at first, but really it's not that bad once you get used to it, guys. So don't be intimidated by it. Just kind of go with the flow. Now here, we could have, uh, yes, you can see that. Okay, good. Here, we could have drawn this one like this. We could have said CH3, CH2, 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 1, 2, 3, 4, CH2, CH3. We could have said that. That's not technically wrong, but it's not very pretty to look at. Um, what we can do is we have four repeating groups in the center. We have four of the same group repeating. So what you can do is just put, like we did here, CH3, open parenthesis, CH2, close parenthesis, 4, CH3. Okay? So that's another way to do it. Now notice, whatever is inside this parenthesis is multiplied by 4. Okay? So it's just this is the best way to do it because it's the cleanest and the neatest. But this is also correct. All right? And these are condensed structural formulas. Now here's another example. Here's an ether where you have CH3, CH2 on the left, CH3, CH2, CH3 on the right. So you have the same thing on both sides of the oxygen. So here's a good way to write it. Open parentheses, CH3, CH2, close parentheses, 2, O. That's one way you could do it. Here's another way. Nothing wrong with it. CH3, CH2, O, CH2, CH3. You can put the bonds in or you can leave the bonds out. Notice here, The only difference between this one and the one below it, this one, is the presence of these bonds right there. That's the only difference, guys. Okay? So there's lots of ways to do these things. There's lots of ways. And it's just a simple way to abbreviate organic compounds. All right? Here's some more examples. As you can see, you can, use, you can take very complicated molecules and you can condense them. So notice here. Uh, here's a good one. We have, our, we have an aldehyde right here. That's how you write the aldehyde. Notice the carbon and the hydrogen are, attached, are beside each other. If we'd written it the other way, so this, this means aldehyde. This, this means this. Let me underline it here. So this here and that there, that's what they mean. Imagine if we'd written it this way, COH. Now COH would mean, that's what it would mean, okay? Having it written like this means that the carbon has a hydrogen bonded to it and the oxygen must be double bonded. Okay, That's the difference. That's why the, the H here has to be beside the carbon and the H here beside the oxygen means it's bonded, the hydrogen's on the oxygen. Okay, Little subtle things like that, but you got to be really, really, really careful with them. Okay, Here's a carboxylic acid. So this means this, but also this and this mean that as well. So you're going to get used to seeing these guys. They're, they're all over the place. Eventually, you'll get used to seeing them. I know it's a lot, but eventually you'll get used to it. Now, here is the more, I think, the more important one, okay? The line angle drawing, sometimes called skeletal formulas. Now, first of all, let's draw the condensed formula here. Uh, let me just pull this down so you can see the title. There you go, line angle drawings. So here, we could draw the condensed structural formula. be CH3, CH2. CH2, CH3. Another way to draw this one would be CH3, open parenthesis, CH2, 2, CH3. Either one is correct. Now, I don't like either one of these drawings. I don't, like, I don't really like the expanded formula all that much unless I need to use it. I don't really like the condensed formulas all that much unless I need to use them. What I prefer are called line angle drawings, also called skeletal formulas. I prefer them. Now, why? Because it's so much more neat and elegant. This molecule can be abbreviated just like this, just like that. 
Now you're probably wondering, how does this work? <laughs> okay. Now, remember that carbon forms a tetrahedral, right? If it's got four single bonds to carbon, you have yourself a tetrahedral. Now that tetrahedral means the bond angles are going to be 109.5. And we're going to learn later on in this course that that, that basically means that the molecule will adopt what's called a zigzag pattern. So it's going to go up, down, up, or down, up, down, however you want to do it. So because it adopts that pattern, you can draw this lines like this. So up, down, up. Now, how does this work? Wherever a line terminates, so wherever a line terminates, whoops, I'm sorry, guys, such as right here, wherever a line terminates, such as right here, that must be a carbon. So there's a carbon there. Wherever the line terminates, that's a carbon. So there's a carbon right there. Okay. There we go. Now, another thing, wherever two or more lines come together, there's a carbon, 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 because two or more lines came together. One, two, two or more lines came together, carbon. All right. So wherever lines terminate, there's a carbon there. Wherever lines come together, two or more, there's a carbon there. Okay, so this is carbon, 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 carbon. Let me back this up. So this right here has one, two, three, four carbons. Okay, the carbons and the hydrogens are never drawn. In skeletal formulas, the carbon and the hydrogens are never shown. Okay, keep that in mind. The carbons and the hydrogens are never shown. They're assumed to be there. So for this one here, carbon, 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 carbon. Okay. On this carbon right here, there must be three hydrogens. How do I know that? The octet rule. If nothing else is shown, what fills in the octets must be hydrogen. If nothing else is shown, what fills in the octets must be hydrogen. So this carbon has one, two bonds already. So it needs to have two more to make the octet. There you go. This carbon has, oops. This carbon has two bonds already. So it must have two hydrogens to make the octet. This one here has one bond, it's right there. So it must have three hydrogens to make the octet. Any other atom must be drawn. Any other atom. Carbon and hydrogen are never shown. Any other atom must be drawn. That's how it is. Okay? Let's see if we can get some examples here. Here we go. How will we draw the skeletal formula for that? Very, very simple. We have six carbons in a row. So let's draw six carbons in a row. And I always have to count them. One, two, three, four, five, six. So there's my six carbons. Let's number them. One, two, three, four, five, and six. We know from here that there's a carbonyl on carbon six. Let's just draw it in. There you go. There's my carbonyl and carbon six. And that's it. That's how you draw it. Now, every now and then, sometimes on aldehyde, people draw the hydrogen in here. Sometimes on aldehyde, people will draw in this hydrogen. I've seen that either done, I've seen it not done. I believe technically correct is not having it, I think. But I don't think it looks very good. You might. You can leave it just like that. It's fine. If you were to draw the hydrogen in, I would probably mark it. I would definitely mark it, right? Because I usually draw the hydrogen in. I just think it looks better. Like, aesthetically, I think it's more pleasing to the eye. But um, if you didn't, you just took it out, left it like that. That's also fine. And that's how you do it. Now, notice how fast that was. Notice how clean that drawing looks. Notice how elegant it is. It's the way to do it. Now, if you use ChemDoodle, which hopefully all of you have downloaded and are using it, um, you'll notice that it defaults to line angle formula. It doesn't even want to do condensed. It can. There's ways to do it. Um, but it rather, it, you know, most people don't want to look at them because they're not pleasant to look at. And expanded formulas are certainly no prize to look at. So here are some examples. You might want to take a close look at these. Uh, here's a good one. And there's this, there's this line drawing. I think everyone will agree this, these are very elegant to look at. So here's an alkene, and here's how an alkene is done. See, there you go. Just draw the two lines between the, you know, you have one line going down, draw one parallel to it. There's a double bond. Um, here's how you do a ring. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six carbons in a ring. That's a hexagon. Five carbons in a ring is a pentagon. Four is a square. Three is a triangle. Okay. 
Very simple, very, very simple. And uh, we'll leave it there. That's uh, the introduction to um, skeletal formulas, line angle formulas, uh, condensed structural formulas, molecular formulas, all that stuff. Um, you know, familiarize yourself with that. Eventually, you're going to start using skeletal formulas exclusively. Everybody always does. Everyone tries to resist it, and they all end up doing it because it's so much more elegant and clean to do. So now with that, I want to wish you all good luck, good chemistry, and I'll see you all soon talking about acids. Take care, guys. See you soon.